I would like to introduce to you Barbara Kessler, who is a singer-songwriter who comes uh, from right here in Hopkinton. And to tell you a little bit about Barbara, she was born in Long Island, New York, where as a child she liked to listen to music and read and hang out with her friends. And as she got a little older, she went on to work as an ice cream truck driver by day and playing cover songs at pubs and bars in the evening. And in her 20s, she began writing her own songs. And as she began performing her own songs, it quickly took off. And she found herself opening for headliners and then being a headliner uh, musician herself and going uh, on the road across the country. She's performed throughout at large venues. And uh, she has four CDs of her music. Her songs have won a number of awards, including Kerrville National, Kerrville National Academy of Songwriters. Uh, her album won Boston Music Award for Outstanding Debut. You might hear Barbara on television also. A, a number of her songs are on uh, television shows. Now she's the mother of two, and she performs closer to home, and she works out of her studio, and she still continues to perform her music. She's a recording artist. Uh, she records and coaches for young artists, and she's a vocal and performance coach and producer for singer-songwriters as, as well. And she recently composed and produced uh, original music for a documentary uh, that was created over at Children's Hospital. And she's a host of a wonderful open mic here in town on Saturday nights, I believe the first one of the month, with Enter Stage Left. And I loved what Barbara said in one of my questions to her. She said, it is a community service to share your songs so that you give your voice for others and so that people can sing them. We need that expression of universal emotion in music. So uh, I look forward to the music that, and the emotion and the words she has to share with us this morning. Please help me give a warm welcome to Barbara Kessler. This is a song. I'm going to start with Cole, Ways to be Brave.
so much. Give me any um, any technical cues you need to back there, Mike or guys. The guitar is not sounding. It's all set. Okay. Um, well, that was a brave song for me to start with because, as you can tell, I have a cough. So I was almost going to skip out on this last night. I was like. <laughs> to warm up my songs and I, I couldn't even get through them so this is a big improvement and um, this is an older song um, from my album called Notion and um, this is called Forever Haunted But 
Since we both got what we wanted Now it's easy to say We always knew there'd come a day When I left you, I left forever haunted This is a, another song from that album, Notion. i um, finding myself doing two new ones today and then two old ones from that album. I got to make this album in Woodstock, New York with Jerry Murata producing. And um, I don't know if you know Jerry Murata is a world-class drummer. He played with Peter Gabriel for years and just plays on a zillion people's records. If you go through your records, you will see his name, from, especially from the, the 90s. Uh, playing uh, so many great records, and he brought Tony Levin to come in, who's the bass player for Peter Gabriel, to play on this song and the recording. So now whenever I play it by myself, it's kind of like, where's my rhythm section, man? <laughs> come on, Peter Gabriel, give me them back. Uh, so just imagine drums and bass and a lot of cool stuff. This is, this is, called, <laughs> this is called Bad Hurricane. Remember that hurricane? Trees were upended, roots exposed. Do you suppose it portended an untimely destruction? Is there any compunction in the trees still standing? Remember? 
remember that her This is a pleasure. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to do one more song, and uh, I'm going to sit down and have a listen uh, to the rest of the features and uh, performers here today. So I, I have a brand new song. Talk about brave. Huh? <laughs> brave or stupid? That's the constant conundrum. Is that brave or stupid, Barbara? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, this is so interesting to me because uh, the songs that I just did, uh, as I'm singing them, it's all about memory and talking about hearing Ellen talk about her quote of, uh, you know, being there to observe the details and that is how you live in the moment. And then as I'm reading Eckhart Tolle and Deepak Chopra and trying to be in the moment, noticing every detail, but trying to forget the past. Or at least not forget, but not be dictated by the past, be in the moment. So that seems like a modern day conundrum. It's definitely a pain for the songwriter. <laughs> it's like, well, what else, you know? I mean, so I think it's such a balancing act of um, being in the alive present and noticing that and then moving on. And I, I'm using that as my excuse for my faltering memory. Oh, I'm in the moment. I don't hang on to those past details. I'm very present. Um, so I'm finding it a very convenient excuse as, as a, in a way, too. So this is a brand new song, as I said. and. Um, it's just trying to uh, put some memories down on paper. It's called A New Me. There were flowers on the table and a fire in the yard where they buried the lobsters as we said our vows and you were holding me from behind and holding back tears cause Jennifer was singing my song but I really can't remember anything but the way Christmas Day, I couldn't sleep from all I ate since I was fat anyway. And then I, my water broke, they sent us home, it wasn't time yet. And then 31 hours later, too tired to hold you, you came blinking up at me, wide and slow, but I really a bridge and I kind of wrote one in. Should I do it or should I just skip to the last verse? Uh. If memory serves, I've lived pretty 
charm days If we get what we deserve Well, what does that say? Well, it's Christmas five years later And I wonder if my heart Like the Grinches could still get bigger And not break me apart Then two weeks later in the morning you came staring into the world a brand new person a brand new version of me yes well but i really don't remember anything but the way you were all i could see and i ever since then so much. I want to dedicate this to all the musicians that performed here this morning, afternoon, uh, especially um, Barbara Kessler, who is quite inspiring. This is uh, a short poem, very short poem. In fact, it's a sonnet. So if you're counting lines, there are 14 of them. <laughs> and the title of it is simply Sonnet by Jean Lees. Music is a strange and useless thing. It doesn't offer cover from the storm. It doesn't really ease the sting of living, nor nourish us, nor keep us warm. And men expend their lives in search of sound, learning how to juggle bits of noise, and by their swift illusions to confound the heart with fleeting and evasive joys. But I am full of quaking gratitude that this exalted folly still exists, that in an age of cold computer mood, a piper still can whistle in the mists. His notes are pebbles falling into time. How sweetly mad it is and how sublime. Thank you. So this is a poem that I wrote um, about three years ago. And it was, uh, it's for my little girl who was only seven then. So it's a very short, um, a very short poem, um, very short lines. Um, so she could um, hopefully follow it. Um, with the full intention that was there behind it. And as it turns out, um, this week uh, was her birthday. So I thought this would be a nice poem to read here. The poem's name is, uh, or title, is Mira, which is the name of my daughter. The sweetest face smiling at me, the littlest hand so trusting in mine, a love so pure, a love so complete, a mother's love for this daughter of mine. Watching you learn, watching you grow, soaking all I give, filling me with pride. A girl so kind, a girl so gentle, a girl so wise, ahead of her time. I cherish every moment I share with you. I wish I could hold still this precious time. Thank you, Mira, for being in my life. You are a blessing, my eternal sunshine. Thanks.
I'm Dr. Nancy Rappaport. Suicide is a difficult topic to discuss, but one that needs open communication. Suicide is the third leading cause of death among 10 to 24 year olds, and it's on the minds of far too many young people. A national survey of high school students discovered that one in seven said that they were seriously considering taking their own lives. Deaths from suicides are only part of the problem. Every year, some 150,000 youth receive emergency care for self-inflicted wounds. Suicide leaves family and friends shocked and confused with unanswered questions about what might have been done to avoid such tragedies. Research has allowed us to identify risk factors, warning signs, causes of suicide, and strategies for prevention. Visit the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention at AFSP.org to learn more.